Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're going to be doing something that I've never done before. We're going to be looking at what the weekend looks like for fantasy and how you can guarantee your win if you're winning or salvage your week if you're currently losing. The first section of this video is going to be for pretty much all leagues. I'm going to be talking about guys who can get you some points, and then I'm going to look at some goalies. The second section of this video is going to be talking more for categories leagues and who you can pick up to help you win specific categories. So let me know, guys, if you do enjoy this type of video after you finish watching it. Let me know if I should continue making these videos. If you don't really like them, if there's not really a point, let me know. Let me know what you think. And if you guys like it, I'll try to put one out like this every single week. If I do start putting one out like this every single week, though, I will not be making as many injury reports. I'll probably do an injury report video every two or three weeks instead, just because it'll be a lot of videos on my plate. So before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's get it done. Thank you so much, guys. Let's take a very quick look at what this weekend looks like in terms of games. On Saturday, Basically, every single team plays except for Anaheim, Philadelphia, New Jersey, and Vegas. Every other team is playing that night, so your lineup is probably going to be full. If you do have any kind of space in your lineup, I'm going to imagine that it's probably in the defenseman slot. And then on Sunday, it's a huge contrast. There's only one game, and that game is Ottawa versus Dallas, and that's why I'm going to be talking exclusively about Ottawa and Dallas players. If you're streaming players from those teams, you're getting them both Saturday and Sunday if you do have a roster spot on Saturday. For example, let's say you have room for a defenseman on Saturday. Well, let's say you stream Essa Lindell and you get him for both Saturday and Sunday. That's better than streaming a guy just for Sunday, right? So hopefully you guys can use this to your advantage. The order in which I've ranked guys on this list is the order in which I pick guys up to get you points this weekend. Josh Norris is my number one, right? You probably can't fit him in your lineup on Saturday, but just one game from Josh Norris on Sunday, top line, top power play, I like better than Ryan Suter two games. I think he has more chance to get points than Ryan Suter. However, Ryan Suter is still getting second power play time on Dallas, and you can probably fit him in your lineup for two nights. I have him this high, assuming that you can fit him in your lineup both Saturday and Sunday. If you can't fit him in your lineup both Saturday and Sunday, I drop him way down into sixth position. But if you can fit him both nights, he's got a chance to put up points because he is getting second power play time on Sagan's power play. Next, I have Connor Brown of the Ottawa Senators. And right now, because Brady Kachuk is not signed, he's getting top power play time and second line time. He's looking kind of good to put up some points. The dude can definitely score goals. Next is Denis Gurianov, and I have him below Connor Brown because he is on the third line with Foxa, but he is still getting second power play time, and he does shoot the puck a lot, so he definitely still can put up some points. Got him at number four. Then I have Shane Pinto and Nick Paul at number five and six, both playing on the second line for Ottawa. As long as Kachuk is out, these guys are going to be playing second line for Ottawa, so they definitely have a good chance to put up points. Now, moving on to goalies, Matt Murray should get one of the two games for Ottawa, either Saturday or Sunday. So hopefully you have room in your lineup for both. If not, just wait until Saturday, see who starts on Ottawa and see who starts on Dallas. And then you should be able to deduce who's going to be the starter on Sunday. So you can make your pick up then. Or if you have same day ads, you can just wait on Sunday until they announce the starting goalie. Mostly for Dallas, for Ottawa, you'll probably know right away who the starter is for Sunday. If Murray starts on Saturday, it's gonna be Forsberg on Sunday and vice versa. So I made these next few sections for categories leagues, but it could technically help you in point-based leagues as well, right? A lot of these categories are still categories in point-based leagues. So if you're curious to see who's gonna do the best in those categories, stay tuned, guys. So first I have shots on goal, and I have Ryan Suter as number one for the guy who's gonna get you the most shots on goal. But again, this is assuming that you have room for Suter on both Saturday and Sunday. If you don't have room for Suter on Saturday, I'm not picking up Suter to help you get shots on goal. The guy I'd pick up first for shots on goal is Denis Gurianov. The dude had 130 shots on goal last season in just 55 games. Yeah, he shoots the puck a very nice amount. He's the guy I would go for first and foremost. Connor Brown is another guy who shoots the puck basically just as much as Gurianov does. 
He has a little bit more upside for getting points, though, I think. So Connor Brown might be my pick if I'm looking for both points and shots on goal. But if you're looking strictly for shots on goal, Gurianov is your guy. And then if you're really desperate and both Gurianov, Brown are taken, Nick Paul should get an okay amount of shots on goal, especially since he is playing on that second line now. So if you're desperate, Nick Paul is my choice. All right, so what if you need to catch up some points in the block shots category? Well, your number one and two guys would be Zaitsev, of the Ottawa Senators and Lindell of the Dallas Stars. Both Zaitsev and Lindell should be basically be locks for two blocks per game. And if you have room in your lineup both Saturday and Sunday, that adds up to four blocks. This doesn't sound like a lot, but block shots don't happen all that much. So four block shots could possibly really help you. If the first two guys I mentioned are already taken, Hakimpa and Zub should get about a block and a half a game. So it should get you a total of three blocks if you stream them for two games. Not my favorite options in the world though if you need them just for block shots. Moving on to hits, who do you pick up if you need to catch up on hits for the week? Well, my number one suggestion is Yanni Hakenpa of the Dallas Start. The dude hit like crazy over four times a game last year, and hopefully he'll continue that trend with his new team, the Dallas Stars, this year. He would be my number one ad if you need hits. Next are Zaitsev and Lindell, who average between two and three hits per game, which is not bad. And if again, if you have room for them both Saturday and Sunday, you'll get double that, right? And last but not least is Radek Foxa, who averaged just under two hits a game, but you probably only have room for him on Sunday, so definitely not my favorite option if you're looking just for hits. If you're looking for face-off wins also, though, Faxa might be a decent option because the dude is also going to win you about seven and a half face-offs per game. So seven or eight face-offs, not bad if you need face-off wins to help you win the week. Next is Josh Norris, and he's a lock for six to seven face-off wins pretty much every single game. Pretty safe bet if you need to catch up just a little bit on faceoffs and also catch up on points. Next is Shane Pinto, and he wasn't that amazing on faceoffs last year, but in the small sample size that we have, that one game that he played, he won eight out of 16 faceoffs. So that doesn't look too bad to me. I might add Shane Pinto as well if I'm looking for faceoff wins. And last but not least is Luke Glendening, who last year won almost 10 faceoffs per game and was 10th in the league in total faceoff wins. This year in his one game played, he only won one faceoff in only five opportunities. So it doesn't look like Dallas may necessarily be giving him the opportunity. Could just be a fluke though. So if you are desperate, Luke Glendening is someone you could consider for faceoff wins. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Did you guys enjoy this type of video? If you guys did, let me know down in the comments. Let me know if it's something you'd like to see every single week. Just keep in mind though, if I do make these every week, I'll be making those injury report videos a little bit less often because that'll just be too many videos for me to make every single week. I'll definitely burn out if I do that. So leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you enjoy the content, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.